Hey guys, so this is Ian back at you with a request video. This is my very first uh, re response to a YouTube request. Kataka Barger, I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name, requested me to do a video on nitrous oxide analgesia. This is the anesthesia machine, and it is the machine we use to give a variety of anesthetic and sedative gases to relax or put a patient to sleep during a procedure. It is also used to give oxygen at the beginning of an anesthetic. So what you need for nitrous oxide sedation is you're obviously going to need your anesthesia machine. Typically in, in a regular dental office uh, you would use a, a portable nitrous oxide system but since this is an oral surgery center uh, we use a anesthesia machine. Uh, most dentists don't use monitors, but I do for an extra measure of safety when dealing with giving patient a substance directly into their lungs. You will need a blood pressure cuff, a pulse oximeter to measure oxygen, appropriately sized mask with a capnograph. I always use a capnograph when doing uh, inhalation sedation to measure the patient's rate of respiration and CO2. Um, output. So the first step in administering any procedure with a patient is you want to sort of explain the procedure and gain a rapport with your patient. Hi, what's your name? My name is Dr. Ian and I'm going to be taking care of you. And you want to explain the procedure. So today, in order to have these teeth pulled, you have to be put to sleep. In order to put you to sleep, we have to put a little straw into your vein called a cannula. And before I give you the cannula, I'm going to give you some nitrous gas so you will be comfortable and won't feel the straw going in as much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some monitors on you so that we can ensure your safety while you're breathing in this gas. Have you ever had nitrous oxide before? Okay, it's a whole new experience. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a flavored mask on your nose. You're going to breathe some oxygen. And while you're breathing oxygen, I'm going to be monitoring you closely. And then once you breathe in the oxygen, then I turn your gas up little by little until you're ready to begin the procedure. So that goes right there. So oxygen monitor goes on your finger. And now, watch those numbers come up on our monitor. We take this. See this? This is the mask I was talking about. And you want to test the capnometer. Blow into the mask and watch if there's CO2 on your monitor. This is how anesthesiologists check the machine is in the hospital. You want to place this over the patient's nose and have them breathe in. Now this is 100% oxygen. We start with the nitrous all the way off. Once they can breathe in oxygen, fine, for five minutes straight, and their SATs remain good, their entitled CO2, their heart rate, their blood pressure, everything remains normal, then we can go ahead and titrate the nitrous. You want to do it in four increment doses. So we're going to start out with 10% nitrous, and then if if the patient needs more, we'll go up to 14, and then we'll go up to 18, and then we'll go up to 22. So it's all done by four after the first initial 10%. While the patient is inhaling and exhaling, you want to watch the balloon. Now, if this were a live patient, the balloon would be inflating and deflating. You don't want the balloon so full, but you don't want the balloon collapse. You want to make sure that the the respiratory rate matches the rate of the balloon collapsing and in, in, inflating. If the patient feels they are uncomfortable with this mask on their face, they can adjust it at any time. And if the patient has a reaction to the nitrous that, or an out-of-body experience that they don't like, they can always take it off. We can always flush their system with oxygen and take the mask off. So while that's going, the patient will say, oh, I'm not feeling it quite yet, or I'm feeling a little too much. Can we turn it down? 
and you can increase the dose by whatever the patient feels is necessary without going overboard. Yeah, if the patient says, give me all that you got, you can't overdose them. Once the nitrous has started to work, you can go ahead and do your procedure. So in this case, we would just place the cannula in the patient's vein to give them the fluids. And then, when the surgeon is ready to start the dental procedures, when the dentist is ready to start working, then what we do is we turn the nitrous off and give the patient 100% oxygen prior to giving the anesthetic. As the patient falls into a deep state of unconsciousness when the general anesthetic is given, we want them to have a, a reserve of oxygen in their lungs, especially if they're being intubated, we want them to have a reserve of pure oxygen in their lungs. So we will typically turn the nitrous off if they're going to sleep. If they're having like a minor tooth extraction where they don't need IV sedation, then we keep the nitrous on the whole procedure. But since he's having surgery, we'll just turn it off. And we'll be like, okay, we're going to give you medicine now. We're going to need you to breathe in this oxygen. The nitrous has been turned off so you can receive your sleep medicine. And while the dentist is preparing the sterile field for the procedure, uh, the anesthetist or the assistant um, will need to be watching the sats on the monitor, the oxygen sat, the heart rate, the end tidal carbon dioxide, and the respirations, as well as the blood pressure. For longer temperatures, uh, temperature will need to be monitored. That is just because the drugs can reduce the body temp. And that is how you perform nitrous oxide sedation.